Hello, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to the latest edition of Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach, and your podcast host. Uh, today, we are going to talk about something that, well, frankly, you probably didn't think about. Um, when you are looking at franchises, we're going to talk about things you need to know that you didn't know you needed to know. Well, that crazy sentence sinks in. Um, that's what we're going to talk about. But first, a quick reminder of who we are. And Fran Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals like yourself interested in owning a franchise. We are partnered with over 600 franchises spanning about 70 different industries. We have two real goals for you. Number one is simply to properly educate you on all things franchising to help determine if this is a path for you. And if so, goal number two is to help you find your absolute best franchise to own. So that is us. Uh, it is just me and you today. Uh, we're going to talk about, again, things you need to know when looking at a franchise that you don't know you need to know. Um, and one of the ways you can do that and kind of understand these things, well, this podcast is a little cheat for that, but is a perhaps shameless plug working with our team here at Fran Coach. This is not about shiny objects. Uh, this is not about um, anything other than you as we go through this. Um, and so we want to really talk about some of the things that we need to focus on that, again, many times people just don't even know that they are things. All right. So let's back up for a second. What do we think it is uh, when people are coming to us and they're looking at a franchise or they start doing any search online for things? They're going to go uh, to how we do everything else. We're going to start searching. We're going to start hunting. We're going to start looking for things like, I've always been in this industry, therefore it needs to be a franchise in this industry. Um, maybe it's something specific to your work experience. Because again, in the job world, in the corporate world, that next gig is going to be is going to come based on what we've already done and what we already know. Um, the other thing that comes up a ton is, oh, I am really passionate about this therefore I must own a franchise in that. Maybe but we've done a whole podcast episode just on the passion myth. Um, and then the other thing that comes up a lot is people are going to go, oh, I've always been a customer of blank. Therefore, I want to own it. I see this one all over the place. Therefore, that's the one I need to own, right? Now, could any of those things actually end up being like huge factors into what is the best fit? Could it be a franchise that you have experience in, you've worked in, could it be something that you're passionate about? Could it be something you're a customer of that you end up owning? Absolutely, yes. But that really is incredibly limiting if that's all we focus on. Um, what does really matter in this? And so we've talked about a few of these things a ton, but there's really the three main things um, have nothing to do with what everybody thinks it is. Uh, number one, the most important thing is your role as an owner. Again, there is nothing more important than this. You're the one that has to get your butt out of bed every day and go run this business. So we've got to make sure it is as ideal as possible. We say this all the time to our clients. This is your opportunity to be selfish without getting in trouble for it. Um, again, this isn't about what's best for somebody else um, or your neighbor or, again, what you've seen. This is about you. So number one is owner role. Number two is the franchisor themselves. And not the it, it's the behind the scenes stuff. How you connect with the franchisor, their team, their leadership, their mission, their values, their culture. I hate that word. It's so buzzy, but it really does matter a great deal. Um, and then obviously their support. Where does it come from? Every franchise has support. That's the whole point of it. But franchisors are no different than any business or any individual. We all have things we are better at or more focused on than others. How does that align with you? And the third most important thing is the people. This like franchising is a people business. It is about your staff, your customers, even the franchisor. How do you connect with, are those your people? Do you feel like you're in the right room? Do you feel like you're talking to people and about things that you want to talk about all day, every day? If not, this is going to be a struggle. So those are the real three most important things. Now, what are some things people don't think of? Again, things you need to know that you don't know you need to know. Well, now you're going to know that, or at least high level, surface level uh, kind of piece of this. 
Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership, and guys, let's be honest, you're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this. And I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything all the way from a bookstore to the best podcast webinars and videos, plus information on upcoming events and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. The franchisor. So, and again, not the it, the, oh, this is a sandwich franchise. This is a painting franchise. I don't care about the it. Um, what? Let's talk about some things behind the scenes with the franchise. Um, what is their size, right? Are they, are they a huge, you know, a thousand plus units all over the U.S. and maybe even internationally? Are they emerging or even maybe micro emerging? Maybe they're they're under fifty units. Maybe they're even under twenty. Um, or possibly, <clears throat> excuse me, they're sitting somewhere right in the middle. Um, when we look at um, franchises for our clients. And this again, I, I you've you listened to any number of episodes, you know I'm all about cheesy, uh, cheesy analogies. But this is like the three bears: one's too hot, one's too cold, one is just right. So we may show you a franchise that is really big, really small, somewhere in the middle. How are you going to know? Again, you're you're trying to trying to learn things that you don't even know are things you need to know. So how does that matter? What are the advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons, whatever it is, it's, it's your, it's for you, right? So if we look at something huge, we look at something micro emerging, we look at something in the middle, somewhere in there, you're going to find your happy spot. Doesn't matter which of those three or, or, you know, kind of any, any gray area in between, but that helps us understand what those, those differences are and what's best for you. Um, what else what about that franchise or? Um, are they part of a big parent company um, where they have multiple brands underneath one umbrella? Is it is it still owned by the founder? Um, is it still just solely owned, but maybe the founder is long gone and now somebody took it over? Those things have it. There's subtle differences with each of those. Um, what's their culture like? And again, like you know, buzzy word with with culture. But there are example I use with this, and these are ex, these are extremes. But let's say you're a franchise owner and you go to the annual conference. So you may be at one conference, and all of a sudden here comes somebody from the franchisor walking up. Their eyes don't meet yours; they look down. What are they looking at? Your little name badge that's around your around your neck. Going, hey Bob, good to see you. And they stick their hand out, shake your hand, right? No, nothing wrong with that. We have all been at the divert the eyes down, cl- glance at the name, and then look back up. Okay. Um, but maybe it is a franchise that that franchisor person sees you across the room and goes, Bob, and runs over and gives you a big hug. Like they're going to be, as you hear that, just on those are extremes, one of those may feel different, feel better for you, right? You may go, Ooh, get off of me with the hug, right? And then the next person's going to go, Dang, that's pretty cool that they have that kind of relationship uh, with their franchise owners. Really, more of a family feel to it. The other side's going to be a little bit more corporate-y, right? Doesn't matter. There's not one better than the than the other. These are things that you need to think about. And again, us being able to show you franchises because we know they're they're we know this stuff, right? To be able to let you really truly understand which is better for you. Um, the other thing is the support. Again, as a franchisor, there's support in every area. That's the whole point of this. But they're going to be stronger in others. So you have to think about, again, as we build out your owner role, 
What are you good at? What do you really enjoy doing? Those are areas that you may need a little less support, right? Um, maybe you are fantastic at talking to people. You have no problem, you know, being part of a, you know, the chamber or the BNI or connecting with maybe realtors if we own this painting franchise, right? Uh, maybe you have no problem talking to the customers, right? Um, but you have no clue about marketing. Right, you have absolutely no idea how to spell SEO, let alone what it's what it stands for or what it does or how it works. Okay, well, that's we've got your strengths. We got some things you're not so good at. We need to make sure that franchisor is incredibly strong in those marketing platforms to help drive traffic to your business. In addition to you being out talking to people, right? Um, maybe you are more back office, right? Maybe you are, again, maybe you, maybe you hate that. Maybe you're a good financial, maybe you're not, right? What are those different kind of key things that if a franchisor, you ask them, hey, what are you really good at from a support standpoint, right? I know you're going to support us everywhere, but what, what do you look at your top two or three things? You need to understand your position, again, as that role, what you're good at and what you're not, and then be able to see those things. Um, some other things that people don't think of um, that we at Fran Coach we like to give you, um, again, some compare and contrast things. Um, are you coming in and are you the very first person in your entire market, right? Um, and I don't mean zip code. I mean, let's say you live in Phoenix, right? Um and there's nobody in all of Phoenix Metro. You're the first one there. Okay, that's one thing we need to look at because there are advantages and disadvantages of that. But let's say you are, and again, you know, use use Google if you're not familiar with with the Phoenix market. But let's say you uh you live you live in Gilbert, and there's an owner in Chandler. There's one in Mesa, right? There's also one in Tempe right? They're not encroaching on you, right? It's your protected territory, but there are already some other owners in your major metro market. What is that like? Um, other things that you won't think of that we're going to help you look at, um, is this a very simple business model or is it more complex, right? Um, all we do is this, um, or we do these 10 different things, right? Um, <clears throat> is it more from a from a, a breadth standpoint, is it more um, highly technical or great? We are going to wash your windows, right? Or we are basically doing um, HVAC, right? Um, think think of that. And again, I look at the menu. I always kind of go. It's like um, you know, it's 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 in and out. We got three things, or it's Cheesecake Factory, and we got thirty pages, right? Um, which is better for you? What are the hours of operation of that business? Um, what are your hours of operation? Maybe it is um, an emergency restoration, smoke, fire, water, right? Every now and then the phone's going to ring at two in the morning. Uh, doesn't mean your phone's going to ring. Your business is. Maybe it's something food, right? We go from, you know, nine in the morning to nine at night. Well, again, you're not in the store those 12 hours, but your business is running. Are you okay with that? Can you walk away and trust that your team is there? Some people can do that. Some can't. So we need to understand uh, those type of things. And then what kind of staff? In fact, as we build out the the ideal model for, pe for people, we're going to discuss staff, right? Is it something you want to do by yourself? Are we better with salespeople, more skilled labor, unskilled? Do we sub it out? Do we have some combination of this? These are things that people don't think of that end up being huge differentiators as we go through this. A couple of these little things we're actually going to dedicate an entire episode to talk a little bit more about. Um, but these things that you would not have thought of going in almost always are key drivers to what is ultimately the best fit for you. It is rarely based on your experience, um, your industry you've been in, your passion, or things that you're already familiar with. Almost everybody we work with that starts a franchise starts a franchise and it is an industry that they have little to no experience in. It is something that wasn't on their radar when we got started. And third, it's oftentimes something they didn't even know existed before we started. How is that possible? You think about that again. It's The franchise is in an industry they have little to no experience in. It's a franchise that was not on their radar before we started working with you. And then it is something that they oftentimes did not even know existed. How is that possible? Well, number one, 
the biggest thing we want people to come to the table with is an open mind. We're going to really kind of expand what that's basically kind of get you out of your comfort zone a little bit. And that's not always comfortable, but when we can really kind of expand what is possible somewhere in those kind of within that parameter is where we're going to find, find the fit. And we have to think about different things. Your role as an owner of that franchise or how do you connect with them and the overall people, staff, customers, franchise, three most important things. And then we need to start talking about the things that you didn't think of that we just laid, laid out and give you an opportunity to see specific examples. It's one thing for me to say, hey, you have a neighbor, you don't have a neighbor. Uh, okay, but what's that really like? Right. What are what are the advantages of that? What are what are what are not? Um, get into things that maybe are a little bit more simplistic or a little bit more complex. Right. Parent company, non all of these things. And we're going to we're going to really dive into a few of these in specific um, episodes just so we can dive a little bit deeper into it. But these are the things, the things that you need to know that you don't know you need to know are often the biggest drivers. So for you working with us and our team, have an open mind. Be ready to kind of, again, get outside of your comfort zone um, and be ready to learn. Because this is number one, this is a learning journey. Number one goal of Fran Coach, help you properly educate, get properly educated on franchise ownership to determine if this is the path for you. It may not be, and that's okay, but maybe it is. And finding the best franchise, I promise you, it is not how you think you're going to do it. It is completely reverse and, and, and opposite of that. And we really have to think of these things again that you would not have thought of. So that is our, our fun little uh, sentence again that I just like saying things you need to know that you don't know you need to know. So now you know, at least high level, and you know, hopefully, that uh, our team here at Frank Coach is here to help you through all of this. I also want to take a moment before we kind of wrap up today is this is actually our 200th episode, which is probably about 201 episodes more than I ever thought we would have. Um, what, what started back in 2020 is really just a way to provide some kind of resources for our clients in a non-written format, which is really how this all started because I'm a reader and a writer. So therefore I thought everybody absorbed information the same way. Um, and then it's turned into this whole thing, right? Where we have um, this amazing following on all the podcast platforms, on social media, everything like that. And so I want to thank all of you for for, for tuning in and listening and just and, and being able to listen to so many of them. Um, and then there are, even just this year alone, 11 listeners um of of our podcast that have reached out to us that have that have already become franchise owners um so like kind of what the heck are you waiting for um but i also want to take a moment to thank um some people on our <clears throat> on our team here at fran coach um and for when it comes to the podcast first and foremost is our amazing editor Lindsay. um she edits she produces anything that remotely sounds or seems like this is done in a professional fashion <laughs> is because of her um and she's been with us dang near since the beginning so some of the first ones probably aren't super good. And then, uh, and, and then, then bit was able to kind of sucker her on and, and been here throughout almost all of these. So thanks so much to, to, to Lindsay. Um, our whole team at Fran coach has grown from at the beginning, it was just me and a couple helpers basically to now, um, there are 11 coaches on our team. We have a support staff of nine others, plus a couple um, kind of third-party vendors that that we work with um, that we've outsourced things to to help us grow and expand. And that's been awesome and not always, always completely, <laughs> completely awesome, but it's been fun to um, be able to, to, especially on the coaches side, bring new people, especially the ones that have come new to the industry to give them an opportunity to really experience um, the thing that we, we, we talk about, right? I, I don't think I could ever be in a situation where I am an employee and talk to you about 
the amazing opportunities that there are working for yourself, right? And so to bring others into that and give them the same opportunity has been super cool. Plus all of our support staff that make 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 this go um, and make me and our team look super smart. So um, Quinn and Lynn and Lindsay, I mentioned Lindsay, Quinn and Taylor, uh, who do all sorts of things kind of behind the scenes for us. Um, we've got Shannon and Kylie that do our calling. It's we get a lot of outreach uh, for for that. Um, and then um, just me personally, the lifestyle we talk about at front owning a franchise is, is, is real. Right. And <clears throat> same thing for, for me with Fran coach um, is being able to have the bizarre by coastal lifestyle of my, my kiddo who's now 11 in Arizona, I have him for a week, my wife um, who's not 11, um, but feels like we've known each other since we were 11 lives in Florida and we, tr we, I travel back and forth often, uh, almost, almost every other week, uh, for, for this crazy life without franchising, there's not a chance in hell that could happen. Um, and just the overall support of, of, of my wife, Danielle being, being a part of this team. Um, this has been fantastic. And so I want to just take a moment to thank everybody kind of in my circle within Fran coach, obviously all of our guests our franchise partners our our suppliers, um, and certainly our, our clients that have come on to talk to us about their journey becoming a franchise owner. So if you're ready for that, you know the deal, francoach.net, franchising101podcast.net. Um, again, the old basketball guy, we are nothing but net here. Don't fall for the imposters. Um, everything is going to be Team Fran Coach when you speak to us. There's never any fee to do so. Uh, so reach out today and let us help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to the next 200.